This problem appears at the 2019 chemistry questionnaire of the qualifying examinations for applicants or Japanese government or MEC scholarships for undergraduate students. The answer key and original questions are linked in the description. Problem 1-1. Which nucleus of the atoms 1 to 4 has just one neutron? To answer this, we need to remember the number of protons in each of these elements, and that's the atomic number of, of each of the elements. And if you recall the periodic table, so they don't give you a periodic table in the exam, but in if we had a periodic table, these elements would be in these positions. We see that the atomic numbers are 1, 2, 3, and 4. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. So those are the number of protons in each of those elements. And the number of neutrons is just the number here on top minus the number of protons. And so this becomes 1 minus 1. It has 0 neutrons. This becomes 4 minus 2. That has 2 neutrons. 6 minus 3. That has 3 neutrons. 5 minus 4. That has 1 neutron. And therefore, this is the answer. Problem 1, 2. Which of the atoms 1 to 4 has the smallest atomic radius? For this problem, we need to be able to imagine the location of the elements in the periodic table. We need to see how they are related in terms of position on the periodic table. So let's bring up a periodic table. And they are here on the red boxes. And we have to recall that the elements become smaller from left to right and from bottom to top. And therefore, the smallest element would be helium. And if we follow this trend, we can see that lead here is the largest and the smallest would have to be silicon. And therefore, the answer is this bit. Problem 1-3. In which of the following underlined atoms in the molecules 1 to 4 has just one lone pair of electrons? Lone pairs of electrons are actually a pair of electrons that do not participate in the bonding. So they are a pair of valence electrons that do not participate, that does not participate in the bonding. So for example, in this case, boron. So let's just look up the periodic table to help us remember the number of valence electrons. Boron has three valence electrons because this is group three. And fluorine, those three electrons are bonding with the fluorine with the fluorine holes. And so boron will be left with no lone pairs. There are no lone pairs because there are no remaining electrons, valence electrons. All three bond with the fluorine. Similar is the case with carbon. From the periodic table, we see that carbon is group four, and so it has four valence electrons. And each of those actually make a bond with oxygen because it forms a double band with each of the oxygen atom. And so if we have two oxygen atoms here, that means four oxygen electrons are actually making a bond with the four valence electrons of carbon. And so again, carbon will have no lone pair left because all four valence electrons will be bonding with the oxygen. In this case here, Nitrogen from the periodic table has five valence electrons and hydrogen has one and there are three hydrogen atoms and that means each of the nitrogen, three of the nitrogen valence electrons will make a bond, will make bonds with the three hydrogen atoms and because there were five originally and you subtract three so you're left with two nitrogen electrons and that forms one lone pair because two ele electrons form a lone pair and so we know that number three is the answer but just to look at number four here f has seven valence electrons and one forms a bond with the hydrogen and therefore there are six remaining and those six form three lone pairs and so this is not the answer the answer is this Problem 1-4. Which of the substances 1-4 to four has the lowest boiling point? We recall that the boiling point is related to the 
electronegativity of an element. And if we bring up the periodic table, electronegativity increases from left to right and from bottom to top, excluding the last group. So we do not look at the noble gases when we think about electronegativity because the noble gases technically has no electronegativity because they don't really interact with the other elements. They don't interact much. And the lowest boiling point is actually the element with the least interaction with other elements because boiling point is related to the strength of the intermolecular interaction. So lowest boiling point would mean very low intermolecular bonding, intermolecular interaction. And that means the answer should be a noble gas. And we, have, we, we only have two noble gases here. We have helium and krypton. And the smaller your noble gas becomes, the stronger are the electrons more attracted to the, to the nucleus. And that means it is less likely for the electrons to actually bond with other elements. And therefore, that means that the higher you are here in the group, just like this trend, the less reactive or the less, the less strong, the weaker the intermolecular forces are. And therefore, the answer here is actually helium. Problem 1-5. Which of the descriptions 1 of 4 is correct for copper and zinc? If we go from 1 to 4, if we, if we look at the choices from 1 to 4, we will notice that 1 is already correct. Both form divalent electrons, or rather divalent cations. Divalent means plus 2. So we know that copper has a plus 2 and zinc has a plus 2. And so we know that 1 is the correct answer. And we cannot really extract this from any any fancy theory or something like that so you, we just have to know that and also if you do not know that and then you proceed on looking at the other at the other choices we can also see that the other choices are wrong for example we say both dissolve in hydrochloric acid how do we know that they do not dissolve both of them do not dissolve in hydrochloric acid we remember the reactivity series so I bring it up here. We see that copper is around, where's copper? Copper is here and zinc is here and hydrogen is here. And therefore, what this means is that the things above hydrogen would be able to replace hydrogen, but the things below hydrogen will not be able to replace hydrogen. So in this, in this choice, number two, zinc will be able to zinc will actually um, replace hydrogen in hydrochloric acid so it will dissolve in hydrochloric acid but copper will not be able to replace hydrogen because copper is below hydrogen the same is true with number three both sulfides dissolve in concentrated hydrochloric acid again zinc is more reactive than hydrogen so that could probably be the case it might dissolve but copper is not not must not really reactive so it's less reactive than hydrogen, so it, it cannot replace hydrogen here. Then copper is more easily oxidized than zinc. Again, what we know is that zinc is zinc is higher in the reactivity series, and so it's more easily oxidized than copper. And therefore, we know that 2, 3, and 4 are actually incorrect. And so the answer is 1. Problem 1-6. Which of the reactions described in 1 to 4 is an oxidation reduction reaction? So this is the same as a redox reaction. And a redox reaction is one where some of the elements change in, in their charge, in their, in their charges here. So in their oxidation states, rather. And so, for example, if we see an element become an ion, then that is an example of a redox reaction. And just checking the reactions from 1 to 4, we will immediately see that in 4, iodine here changes in oxidation state from 0 to negative 1. So it is negative 1 here because sodium is positive 1. And therefore, we know that this is a redox reaction. 
Problem 1, 7. Which of the descriptions 1 of 4 is not correct to describe a phenomenon that can be observed when a catalyst is introduced in a chemical reaction? And let us recall the definition of a catalyst. A catalyst is something, is a substance we add to a, to a reaction so that the activation energy is lowered. And that means that the forward reaction will now be faster because it's been lowered, the activation energy is lowered. And that also means that the reverse reaction will be faster because, again, the activation energy is also lowered for that reverse reaction. And therefore, 1, 3, and 4 are correct statements. 2, however, is not necessarily true because, in general, a catalyst does not change the enthalpy of reaction. It only speeds up the reaction. Therefore, our answer is this. If you learned something new today, please help my channel by clicking the subscribe button and the bell for the notifications. See ya!